probably what I've got here. I think these are the easy bits. You're like, okay, I'm starting to get a pattern. I'm ignoring this part down the bottom over here because I know I'm not allowed to take the square root of a negative number. In fact, we haven't written it before, but I'd love you to write it now. When you highlight that part, the reason you're highlighting it is because the square root of this part is undefined. So that's why I'm not drawing anything over there. Okay? So go ahead, write that next to your highlighting. And then you've got these um, values that ended up being useful, right? I've got the zero over there on the left, and I drew a fat blob there because I know my graph's going to start there. You've got these one, two, three points where the graph is exactly equal to one. And then I also went ahead and did four because I know what the square root of four is. It's two, right? Now that's pretty nice. I'm reasonably confident that because I've been graphing these for ages, I would know exactly where this goes. But maybe if you're like, mm, not 100%, you can put a couple of extra points on. For instance, um, I keep on looking for a particular fraction. What is it? 0.5. I, I, I will look at 0.6 in a second, but the main one I'm looking for is a quarter. I keep looking for a quarter because I know what the square root of a quarter is, right? Just like I know the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of a quarter is a half. This over there, that is where I see a quarter, right? The square root of that is going to be a half just above. Okay? Now, Serene mentioned 0.6. I see 0.6 right there. What's the square root of 0.6? I actually don't know. Can someone tell me what the square is? 0 0.77. So that's a bit higher, like that. Okay? Yeah, just a bit higher. Like 0 0.6 and then 0 0.77. Yeah? So you could do, at this point, you can now do as many points as you like, but I'm pretty confident I know what this is going to do. I'm going to draw a shape like this. Actually, I'm going to draw it another color just so it's really obvious for you. Can you guys see this green? Is that coming out? Yep. It's going to weave up and down. It's going to go right through there, and then over here, I think that should do it. What do you think? Yeah? So this is the shape that I'm getting. I should do this. Say that again. Now, by the way, this guy over here, uh, maybe I should have drawn it so it goes a little bit steeper, because unlike, uh, this is quite hard to do. Yeah, that's a bit better. Unlike in the previous example, you know how we're like, oh, look, it starts to become a straight line, right? See this guy here, what do we start with? The original function, what does it look like? Uh, a cubic, right? So it's, um, it's a, I can actually tell you, it's, uh, wake up, y equals x cubed minus x plus 1. I'm only telling you that so you can put it into Desmos if you like. When you take the square root of this thing, right, just look at that first term, the square root of x cubed. What power, what index goes with the square root? Like, how could I write the square root of 16 in index notation? It's 16 to the power of? Does anyone know? Uh, 1 over 2. Yeah, 1 over 2, a half. So the square root of x cubed is x to the power of 3 over 2. Now, I'll let you go and explore that in Desmos yourself. x to the power of 3 over 2 is not a straight line. x to the power of 1 is a straight line. And this is a bit different. It does grow, just slower. OK? All right, last one. I'm so confident I reckon we can do this one together. Um, we can do all the nice easy spots. I'm not even going to draw the y equals 1 line because I think you can spot it pretty well. Let's look for where y equals 1. Can you see the two spots? They're kind of there on the sides over here. There's y equals 1. There's y equals 1. Right? Where am I getting 0? What x values? Minus 2 and 2. Minus 2 and 2. So I'm going to draw a nice fat blob there. What other point might be important to me? Can you select one for me? Two. X is 2 or Y is 2? Y, y is 2. Uh, I've got the top of the circle, Y equals 2, and that's going to be about 1.4, right? So I'm putting that, I'd say it's about there, OK? And you can put in as many points as you like now, but you're going to get this kind of weird sort of whoop, like that. Same, but different. That one wasn't very good. I'm going to try it again. What TV show? Same, Same but different? OK. Now, we're about to do something. Can you turn back to the first page you're looking at? We're about to do something which sounds like it's going to be a whole new thing, but it's actually just a continuation of what we're about to do. OK? No, you're going to do this as well. OK? But importantly, if you have another color for this, that would be really, really useful. OK? What we're about to do now is not y equals the square root of the function. It's, can you write this on the side, please? y squared equals the function. Now that sounds like it's a whole new thing. You're like, oh my goodness, how do I deal with this, okay? It's not a whole new thing. 
Can I ask you this question? Eyes up for a second. If I ask you, ask you to solve this equation, a squared equals 49, what would your next line be? A equals plus or minus. They both work, right? They both work. What you did was you took the square root, but you also said there's two ways to do this, right? Positive one, negative one. Well, now I want you to think about how that applies to what we're looking at here. If I want y, what's the next line? Plus or minus what? It's the square root, right? You went from 49 to 7, you took the square root? This is the square root of, right? Now, you already know what the plus square root of x looks like. It's right there. Now think back to yesterday morning we did reflections, right? What is minus of this? It's flipped across the x-axis. It's underneath. So can you go ahead and do your very best and draw the same thing but draw it upside down? It's going to go down like that, right? That's a problem. It's the whole thing, which shouldn't surprise you because it's a y squared. This is y squared equals x minus 2. It's a parabola. It's just the other way around, right? What about this guy? What's this going to look like? Okay. Same thing? Yeah, it's two. They're not quite parabolas, but it's the same idea. Uh, it's going to be about there. Let's try our very best. The actual answer for the question is this. That's right. It's the whole thing. Not only the top, but also the bottom. Thank you. That, that is complete, right? It is the whole graph, the, perp, the blue part and the purple part, that is the y squared equals f of x, right? Because you've got the top part, it's positive. You've got the bottom part, it's negative. Uh, what's going to happen here? This guy's going to look weird. Think about this carefully. It's my green graph, right? I'm going to do my very best to do the same thing, but upside down. Uh, about there. OK. Wish me luck, people. Think I'm going to get something like this. Then it's going to go down. It's going to go up. And then it's going to go like that. What is that? What is that thing? It's like a roller coaster. Yeah, it's sort of like a weird roller coaster where at some point you go upside down, okay? They go, right? Now this guy's weird, right? Is this a function, this new thing? This is not a function. What do we call it? It starts with an R. It's a relation. Thank you. It fails the vertical line test, but just because it fails the vertical line test doesn't mean you can't draw it. It's a really cool thing. The entire thing, green and purple. And last one, down here, what is it? A new circle. It's the same thing flipped over. Yeah, this guy, it's sort of like a, uh, yeah, like a fat looking, like someone sat on an oval, right? Yeah, that's right. It's like, oh, sorry, I gained some weight and I'm a bit fat on the ends, okay? So when you take the whole thing, blue and purple, you're getting y squared equals f of x. So Rastin, your question, is it the answer? It depends what you are asking the question. Um, yep. It's the top part. It's the top part. <laughs> hey guys, one last quick note and Raston, hopefully this answers your question, but ask if it doesn't, right? What we've been considering is the difference between, I'm going to go into a new page, the difference between y equals the square root of f of x compared to y squared equals f of x, right? Essentially, you're getting the top half, or you're getting the whole thing. Um, and actually, you've known this for a while. Think back to what equation, you've only learned one equation and how to graph it. Before today, you've only learned one equation which had a y squared in it. Do you remember which one it was? There's an equation that had a y squared in it. It was the circle, right? Do you remember this guy? Yeah. This is a circle. This is the unit circle, right? Um, I could rearrange it like this. That is still the unit circle, right? That's the unit circle. But this guy over here, I'll do it in another color. This guy over here is not a circle anymore. What is it? A it's a semicircle. It's just the top half. What would I do if I wanted the bottom half? Plus. No, I'd slap a minus sign. That's the bottom half, right? So you can see this is just the top half, right? And this is the whole thing, right? Y squared gives you the mirror image on both sides. The square root only gives you the blue part. Blue part there, green part there, sorry. Blue, and then blue, okay?